thank you for surrendering your Saturday afternoon for me. And um, this is to get all the people on loan development level for mentorship all up to date, all correct, starting from the same point as of September. So, first thing I'm going to do a bit of an in house register. So, these are our handouts, you all have your names on them, so obviously you can pay with your letter. So, Nathan. And then we have Jordan. Jack. Thank you. Jen. Cheers. And thank you. Okay, so if anybody is joining us through this meeting, um, says quite clearly on the thing that if you do come in, obviously not to interrupt, I'll introduce them as soon as possible. And they have the exact same handout, so hopefully it'll be effective and they can join in as and when. So for the purpose of this session, if people are late, do dip in and out. We are aware of it, and if people have certain circumstances, those people will be watching it back. So hello to you guys. So quickly then to go through this handout to stop people from shuffling through through injury. If we have a look then at the first page in, you should have a ground rules or working agreement setting thing. So we're going to around in the group, um, and we're just going to agree on what is going to be accepted within the session and decide on consequences of it. If we turn to the next page, on the next page are four outcomes which hopefully we will achieve in the session. On the following page is a communication agreement document, which we will go through later. And then on the next page is part of our group activity, following through right to the end where there's a bit of feedback. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay, super. So to start off then, if we go on to your second page in, which is the working agreement. So who would like to start for the volunteers? To be on time. To be on time. Okay, and before we write that down, can anybody say why we're not going to put that one down? Because we start to well, the end it's late. No. Just go with it. People might be dipping in and out of the session. Okay. This is an informal session. Going forward on the online classroom, everybody's expected to be on time. However, today attendance may vary. Okay? So other than that, what shouldn't we accept in this class? Mobile phone on silent. Yeah, that's a good one. So everyone wants to write that one down. And then obviously if we can all make sure that they are on silent. Yeah, I'm going to put my phone on silent. <laughs> <laughs> so who would like to go next? Can anyone else think of another growing rule? Have mutual respect until real respect is determined. Do we all agree with that one? Yeah. Okay, mutual respect. So just to define for people by mutual respect, just general well behaved kind of thing and mm -hmm. polite. Teamwork, communication, general and all that. Fantastic. Any other ground rules? Or are we fairly happy with that? Probably comes in with the same thing really as, as, as that one, but just that one person speaking like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, other ones might be no abusive language or situation. If any of you do get stressed, irate, or angry during this meeting, I hope not. But if you do, please just leave the session and have a couple of minutes to cool down. Okay? Right, so then, if we haven't got any other people coming forward, can somebody else just join the session? Everyone to be yeah. given a chance to take part. Yeah, that's a good one. Inclusivity. Okay then. So we should all have four ground rules. Okay. So then, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Mobile phones. What might be the consequence of choosing a mobile phone? Okay, so if somebody hasn't got their phone on silent and starts obviously interrupting the session, um, what should we agree should happen? In other words, should that person leave the room or...? Um, either that or turn on their phone. Yeah, so we're just going to agree if it happens, turn it off. 
in carry on. Mm-hmm. Okay. You could have the scenario where you're expecting an urgent call. Absolutely. Yeah, so agree to keep it on vibrate. If it is an emergency, then obviously exit the room. Mutual respect if people are disrespectful. If it is respectful, it should be actually in the Okay, do we all agree with that all? So, in inclusivity then, Nathan, if people are excluding people and take items, what should happen? Okay, do we all agree with that? Yeah. Page. There is a tip sheet. 
Okay? So on this tip sheet, you will notice that they are all the evidence that are on the dashboard in that very first welcome email to you all. So your initial assessment, your CV and RPL, your quality workbook, your safeguarding workbook, health and safety workbook, PLTS workbook, IAG workbook, full practice workbook, and learning handbook. So again, everybody is at a different stage with these. So if you can go through and tick what you've completed, tick what you can complete by the 31st of August, and then in the last box, if for some reason you do have any personal circumstances and you cannot complete these by that date, please get in touch with me after this session. Okay, so just jot in there what your reasons are. We do need the ERR workbook back if we've not already gotten it back up for you in the next couple of days towards the midweek. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. yeah. Well spotted. <laughs> As Louise has just pointed out, the ERR workbook is not on there, so if you could all write the ERR workbook down and all add an extra row. Thank you very much, Louise, for pointing that out. So, to get a bit of understanding of what everybody knows and does not know, could you tell us a little bit about what the ERR workbook actually involves? Well, the ERR book, the employer's rights and responsibilities, it really covers everything to do with health and safety, safeguarding, quality and diversity, as it's in the workplace, risk assessments, and basically a bit about your employment role well and what you do, what your organisation does, etc. Okay. Does everybody else agree with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say it probably goes on a bit more, but you, you're not like repeating your health and safety stuff. So it's something just it's different than what's in the health and safety of a safety yeah. Okay. So then, Jordan, if you can explain a little bit about what's in the health and safety workbook. Um, health and safety so. covers your role in different health and safety circumstances, like what you're doing day to day. Uh, how to report things, uh, how to manage risks or, okay. and minimise them. Okay. Jack, um, if you could give us what you understand about the safeguarding um, safeguard is really the part of the safeguarding and so the use of the workplace, in the physical, verbal, the sexual, in the anything on the ground. Okay, fantastic. Nathan, if you'd like to give us your understanding of the information in place or guidance. Super, good stuff. <laughs> How about the learner handbook? Uh, Brilliant. Okay. And Joe, if you could give us a rundown of the pop practice workbook. Yeah, pop practice workbook is just really sort of um, looking at the uh, land on examples of practice um, within sort of in, within the industry. Um, just things to look out for, um, you know, and sort of building good practice yourself. Fantastic. So, any volunteers? for the other book, so PLTS. As a group, what do we think PLTS is? What do we understand of the workbook? It's all about personal okay. and the six natural categories involved, for example, the team is team members. Yeah. Anybody else like to add anything extra? Or? Okay, with that. And why do we need to get them over the start? It's important to be able to identify the ground and use that and call someone over there. Yeah, fantastic. Anybody else that's going to be anything else? No? Super. And CV and RPL. CV is fairly self explanatory. So, RPL, who'd like to give? Yes. Perfect. So, what is recognition of prior learning? Um, any sort of course we've got and relating to your qualifications that you've done 
some sort of first aid or health and safety, either like an in house or a veterinarian, and that would still relate to it in, underneath the health and safety workbook. Absolutely. So then, as a group, IAG, Information Advice for Guidance, has anybody got the chance to look at these? I know the deadline was for September for these, so it's not a problem if nobody has had a look over them yet. I've not really looked at it. Correct. These were all standardised on the day, wouldn't they? So your information advice and guidance is just pretty much stuck around the course. It's about information advice and guidance available to you uh, as assessors and as well as practitioners. We're looking quite well for us in the future. There are three workbooks. One for you as the learner, one for your employer, and one if you are looking for a for your parent or guardian. Obviously, if you're a book 24, feel free to give it to your parent or guardian if you like. It's all good and well getting the pair, employer and parents and Okay, so we all have to look the work so far that's set. Yeah? Okay, so your main aim workbooks then. That's going to be the next step that we'll talk about later. So there are a lot of workbooks to go through. Okay? The process is involved in getting the workbooks over. Does anybody want to be very much step up and give a little bit of a rundown of the process of how we get the workbooks across? Enabled and do it, so I'm getting to find that on our learner dashboard and essentially runs like an email and send them back and forth to them. Okay, fantastic. So, with the workbook, then if you come back and forth with feedback, what happens to you? Yeah, so then we put it onto their web portfolio, then talk to go back to, and then it's all completed on there. So, if you like, you want to look at it, you know what's going to be. Okay, so we all. Good and happy with the understandings of all that. Okay, super. If anybody on distance side would like a slower version of this, because these guys are slightly more up to speed, then when you get in touch with me next, just say so and we'll come through things at a slower pace if it's required. Right, so if you turn then mid book, I think it's one, two, three, four or five pages in, depending on my counting ability. So what are your roles, what are your responsibilities, and there's a line page. Okay, so this page I want you to all work individually for the next couple of minutes and think about the role as an assessor or as a tutor, trainer, somewhere in the learning development sector. Think of what your main roles would be and what your main responsibilities would be. So please try and work on your own, people at home, again, if you're working in groups on the other end of the camera, try and keep it so that you're working on your own for this bit. Okay, so I'll just give you a couple of minutes to go through that, and I'll come around and see what you're putting down. whilst I'm just talking, depending on where you're up to within your qualification and what you have studied in the past, you might have a different understanding of what roles and responsibilities are. So if you're a little bit unsure, just have a go. Think of as many as you can. If you can't think of five, don't worry about it. You are going to go through this as a group. Okay. An apology for my spooky shoes. Again, people that are doing this distance, if you want to work as a group with this, then again, if you take the communication thing, you can obviously get in touch with each other and work as a group. Okay, but unfortunately, I know a lot of people can make it, so if you want to go through this with me or with a little team here, we can work as a group. So, how are we all getting on? Yeah. <laughs> okay. If you 
you're struggling to think of a full five, don't worry. If you're unsure whether it's a role or responsibility, yeah, don't panic, don't worry. We're going to go through this as a group. That's not a problem. Hopefully in this exercise, like I said at the beginning, this will get us all standardised on our understanding of all responsibilities, which will be kind of integral to the qualification in your work role. I do believe it's several times within your way all the time. So if you're to get it Okay, so that goes along with the assessment system, doesn't it? Yeah. So, 
Also do it intermediately as well. As part of the ILRs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where would you get feedback? So not necessarily from the knee, but where would you get feedback? At what point in the qualification, maybe? At what point during the process of the assessment cycle? You should at the end of a um, like piece of evidence or uh, like set stages for the qualification, like mm -hmm. say we said ten percent rules. So with feedback, what do you need to do when giving feedback? Be positive. That's the same time. And then? There you go. So you've got your layer of positive bread, you've got your development of the inside. Okay, that's the feedback sandwich. What other things are in feedback? As a practitioner, should you or should you not do? Okay. So, in doing that, how would you keep everybody the same? I think make sure it's the uh, you know written feedback you give is uh, mm -hmm. not judgmental and things like that. But then treat, yeah. You know, you treat it all the same way. Okay. So you got to make sure it's agreed to set standards and that you're not doing it for opinion. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Impartiality is a good one. Anything else? So think about what you're all twiddling with. What's the government said on ink? Uh, no ink pen is derogative. So with assessment decisions, do we think that's solely a role or do we think it crosses into responsibility? Yeah. So why would it be responsibility? We've pretty much covered it, but on some main purposes. Fantastic. Yeah, and you do that through vision feedback in development. Okay then. So Joe, I can see you've got a few roles done. So yeah. could you give me one of yours, please? Yeah. Um carry a health and safety assessment that's in the workplace. Okay, so that's a good one. So, would you like to explain who, where, and why that? Who uh, is the assessor? Uh, work is wherever the learner, you know, wherever you're attending, or mm -hmm. you carry out a health and safety assessment. Uh, yeah. Um, when, when you, when you, you know, when general when you do a disability mm -hmm. observation or something like that. Okay. Why? Because we need to make sure that the learners are working in a safe environment. Okay. Super. Anybody like to add anything else now about health and safety risk assessment? Can I just add in uh, normally the risk assessment you probably be doing it um, when the learner is and no we've got the employee then to start staying. Oh sorry, do we have to have that? Well you're doing it obviously when you're walking in doing an observation. You're doing it anyway, but that's what we do we we've been doing. Do the other three agree with the flow of that conversation? Okay, so with a risk assessment then, when you enroll a learner, yes, you have to do your risk assessment, make sure that they're in a safe environment, etc., etc. When you go out to do observations when you visit the workplace, you need to refer back to that risk assessment and get in touch with the employer. Okay? Make sure nothing's changed, make sure there's nothing altered, and how do we do that? Um, again, that ties in with not in safety, but in health safety, but it's physiotherapy and safety as well. Okay. If you're not infecting a learner, you're not in stir, you're protecting yourself. Okay, fantastic. So if we take you, for example, and you've just gone out to a workplace, your risk assessment's gone fine, going along the lines of health and safety, and you've gone in there, you've got a learner in front of you, if you get a bit aggressive, say Nathan's up to get quite riled with you, he's using foul language, making you feel uncomfortable, what do you think you should do in that situation? 
um, we'll need to pull out provided many of your information to say nothing. Yeah, so all comfortable, we'll go to have a look and see them, aggravate it, and obviously inform the manager of what's going on, and go to the office, and we'll talk to So, are we all happy with that to roll? Yeah. I've also got in the, like, generally is a responsibility as well as safeguarding the lines. Yeah, fantastic. It is more of a responsibility than a role because as an assessor, it's, if you feel uncomfortable at all going and doing a risk assessment or if you're worried about challenge, you can go to your IQA and your IQA will do it for you. So it'll be on a more formal basis and it'll be at risk of your learning. Okay? So, who else has any other roles that we haven't covered? Um, I've got one that can be argued as a role as well as a responsibility to CPD. CPD? Okay. Why are you arguing it? Well, because it is part of your role as an assessor in whichever area you're um, assessing, like, for example, let's say hospitality. Mm -hmm. To assess it, you need to have an up-to-date knowledge of that area. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you won't be industry competent to assess it, and obviously you have them put that skill in that area. Okay. So responsibility would be pretty much the same thing? Or? Yeah, well, yeah, on the same lines again, because it is your it's a broad responsibility for whatever area you're in again. Okay. So, Jen, what kind of thing would contribute as CPD? CPD could be um, attending seminars, watching videos, reading textbooks, reading articles on the internet, um, um, attending sort of classrooms, online classrooms, that kind of thing. Yeah, super. Like this one now. Yeah, yeah, this is what I'm doing. It's not much of CPD yet, but we all know. CPD. Alright, so what else about the PPD? Can we go any further? <coughs> so, whose responsibility is CPD? Yeah. yeah. Okay, if you need any help with CPD, you can. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, CPD, do we go for role and responsibility? Do we agree on that one? Yeah. Okay, anybody else have a final role? Yeah. Okay, so, then? And who will be the assessor? I'll be accurate. Right. Yeah. Um, when will be, could be end of the year, could be before you attend to check that it's all right with the manager for you to go and visit it. Um, or it could be for us to do like an expert witness um, statement, things like that. Yeah. Um, work, generally in the workplace. Okay. Why? Because obviously you need to build up um, you know, relationships with the employer yeah. um, and then you get feedback on how the work is. And you may want feedback on how the learners do from the employer or the manager. Okay, would anybody want to add an extra about employers of why we get in touch? Who would get in touch? Um, the learners of Yeah, who else is that? Okay, see that. So, is that purely a role or is it a responsibility as well? Bit of both. Okay, so responsibilities then. Does anybody have anything that we haven't covered in roles? Do we? And to ensure that the learner is only on qualification at the start. Okay, why do you say that? Because a lot of people want to do qualifications and apply to the under. Okay, and how much? How would you ensure that the learners on the right qualification? Well, it's, well, by the initial assessments that we talked about earlier, because obviously a lot of people want to do, they just see levels. I think, oh, I'm going to go for level three, I'm going to go for level four, rather than doing what is necessary for the, the job that they're in. Okay. Yeah, so you've got the funded stuff, levels like that is absolutely fantastic. Is there any other reasons, or sorry, are there any other ways we can make sure that, that learner is on the right qualification? Yeah. 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 Make sure maybe the learner doesn't feel like they've been forced into a qualification by the managers and it's actually something they want to do for their own progression. Super. Okay. So do we all agree that is a responsibility of the assessor or practitioner? Mm -hmm. And other people as well, like sign up people and things like that, and just seek assessment. 
stupid. Depending on the company you're with, if you're self-employed, uh, quite a lot of time self-employed, you will be getting involved with the sign-up process, finding your own learners. If you're employed, more often than not, they have a sign-up team. So it is one, so that's good. Any other responsibilities? Um, I'd like to be informative and give adequate resources to learners. Yeah. So within that, why would you do that? Where would you do that? Um, why you do that is because, again, all learners learn in different ways. It's important to have a, a good network of people available. Yeah. Um, when you do that all the time, it has to be coherent, it has to be over the course, the whole course. Yeah. Yeah, and again, that would be assessments and like way to be doing that. Yeah, fantastic. Anybody else like to add to that? Anybody disagree? No? Okay, that links in with the very first one with support, but more in depth resources and stuff. Mm -hmm. Again, depending on company you're with and whether you're not employed, etc., etc., you may or may not have to create your own resource. So, in the qualification, you will learn about developing them, but you may also have set ones to use. Okay? So, any other responsibilities or rights? To help keep the um, learner motivated. Yeah. Large complete course at the end of the day, you know, you want to make sure that they complete it, you know, we can learn that to have a bit of a patch, personal issues, mm -hmm. or just to run the coursework. Yeah. So you need to, you know, keep them motivated. Yeah. Does everybody else think? I'll just come under providing effective support. Yeah, it goes under it. They're all quite the same, you say, me. They all run under the same titles, mm -hmm. but motivation is slightly different to support in the way that you'd support the learner who's obviously got a long motivation is getting into that point. Um, so, who else could you motivate as an assessor? An employer. Mm -hmm. yeah. I should take more interest in the learner's points of their knowledge or their clients, not just the open anyway. Yeah, as an assessor or practitioner, you will find it very hard if the employer does not like it. So, motivating employer engagement is key. Anybody else? So, thinking of younger learners, particularly 16 to 18 parents. Yeah. So, why would you need to motivate the parents? No, so, again, they've got that support network at their home or yeah. within their family or friends. Okay. Um, and I'll do that help them achieve their targets. Okay. All right, so are we all happy with that? Do we think that is all of the roles and responsibilities covered? Probably not more of it, but yeah. I've got a general. I'm sure someone's going to agree, but I think that's quite good. Enough. Okay, I've heard the term. I've got to abide by the data protection act and remain. Um, there you go. Maintain confidentiality at all times. Fantastic. Do we think that's a role or a responsibility? Responsibility. Yeah. So with the data protection act, what kind of things? Do you have to data protect? All personal information is provided mm -hmm. by the learner, by the managers, yeah. anyone really that you can contact with. Okay, and how would you data protect? By storing any information that you've got, keeping it in lock cupboards, mm -hmm. uh, any information that's kept on the computer to have it password protected. Yeah, okay. Make sure information is correct. Not out of date. Okay, that goes more under CPD than data protection. Data protection. Obviously, the legislation and policies and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, your own knowledge. Yeah, that's not that you know on. On that respect, yeah, but it also falls more under CPD than data protection. Data protection with learner is more the stuff that they send to you, and obviously protecting the learner from their data getting out. The CPD part is keeping itself up to date, so you are current, so you're not disadvantaging them. No, I mean, I mean, with regards to the information address, mm -hmm. things like that, and the information we are mm -hmm. but it's not a really related like date. Yeah, that is down to the assessor as well. Yeah. yeah. And any old information, what do you do with the old information? Just go to the. Um, Check it, check it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to find it. Only able is it? <laughs> okay, fantastic. So, with all them, I've heard safeguarding, data protection, health and safety. One more biggie. Right, it's responsible to the employees, to the employees. That is one, you've got to ensure that your learners are aware of their rights within the law, obviously not getting bullied in work, etc. Equality and diversity. There you go. So, quality and diversity, who, what, where, and why? So, who is responsible for END? Everyone. Everyone, yeah. 
What is E and D? Tonight everybody's right to be treated as an individual. Yeah. To be respected, to have their needs and preferences heard. Yeah. Anybody else like to add? So under E and D with your learners, the qualities you have to have nine protected characteristics. Can we take a stab in the dark of what the nine protected characteristics are? Let's see if I can remember them all. <laughs> Gender. Gender's one. Sexual orientation. Yep. Age. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So we've got five. We've got gender, sexual orientation, age, race, and religion. Um, pregnancy. Pregnancy is one. Three more. Would personal characteristics be one? Is that? Make him fair if you like. <laughs> Marital status. Marital yeah. status, yeah. yeah. Um, Two more. Trans transgenders, something to do with? Um, sexual reassignment goes under and with um, sexual orientation, they're in the same sentence. Colour in it or is that not right? Ethnicity. Ethnicity is the word. Mm. Yeah. One more. Mm. Doing well. Come on, guys. <laughs> we can do <laughs> this. Come on. Ethnicity. Mm. Is it um, ability slash disability? Disability, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. Disability. Mm. Disability discrimination. No, mm. so they are gender. Sexual orientation or gender reassignment, age, race, religion, pregnancy, marital status, ethnicity, and disability. So, why are we not allowed to discriminate or harass people because of these? As assessors. Okay, rephrase the question. Because they're protected characters, they're protected. Yeah. Under law. Okay. By law. But if you have learners and you have personal issues against one of these, why aren't you allowed to share it? We could be inclusive and um, yeah. provide everyone with the same, uh, same opportunities to learn and to improve and progress. Yeah. Because if you bring your personal issues in, if you're not objective as a person, you're going to disadvantage the learner, you're going to end up in court. And it's not good. It's very messy. Um, so make sure you have them stuck in your head, though if you are being abusive or harassing to any learner in any way, that's generally bad in your job role. Okay, so E and D is another one of the main roles and response, uh, roles and yeah, roles and responsibilities. Yeah, keep using stuff in there. Any others that we can think of. So we've got data protection, E and D, safeguarding, health and safety, CPD, assessment, decisions, feedback. Will it come under like a generic company policy? Because that would obviously come into um, as a responsibility of CEOs and mm -hmm. people within other companies as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So company policies of your own and your lab's company policy as well. Yeah. yeah. Good one. And the assessment cycle then, we have something, collect, coach, feedback. What's the one you're missing out for roles and responsibilities? I don't know why. Hmm? I do <laughs> Think of scheme of work, session, assessment. A plan. Uh, plan. Uh, 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 yes. action plan. Your assessment cycle is plan, play, Let judge, feedback. As an assessor, your main role and responsibility is to follow that cycle and ensure that it's done correctly and adhere to all the policies, like legislation, etc. etc. You could write a list of dozens of things on there. So as you're doing your research, I'm sure you'll be bored to death over the next year of all the roles and responsibilities. But if we can stick to them, it means the learners obviously get a good education. I don't, there's not mentioned neither about the appeals process, that I should always point it out. Well the noise. So appeals process, um, appeals process, what is it? What is it there for? Um, um, so. You'd like, you believe that. 
someone's pointed out a mistake, for instance, there might not be a mistake with your assessment decision mm -hmm. that you think is unfair yeah. and you're correct mm -hmm. about. Obviously, if it's your IQ you're pointing out, can you go feel back to the IQ and mm -hmm. take it higher, for instance, like to the EQA yeah. or something? Yeah, and it applies to the learner as well, your assessment decisions. Yeah. yeah. If they disagree, if they think you've been too harsh or too, maybe even too lean, mm -hmm. um, they can then appeal as well. Okay, so the learner should go to the assessor. Mm -hmm. Then if they disagree, they can then go to the IQA. And then if they still can't agree, it's obviously something seriously wrong and it could go higher. It should not get to that point. Why is it important that the learner knows about the appeals procedure near enough every time you see them? So if they know the procedure, if they do want to do it, and if, you know, if you don't, if you don't have a comfortable approach from you, you know, yeah. who would be your approach to provide it with the detail with the IQA name and contact number? Absolutely. And also, you don't really want the learner going straight to the award department, or straight to the sector skill council, and saying, I've got an ineffective assessor, because at that point, it shows that you're not doing the job, because the learner doesn't understand how they're supposed to contact people if they're upset. Okay. Right, so if we're all happy on that, the discussion's kind of over with and done with, it's up to you to do your own research, get yourself comfortable with it because you kind of need to know all your roles and responsibilities to be an effective practitioner. On the page after the notes you have questions. At this point, if you have any questions, please drop them down and if they're personal, ask afterwards, but you will be given a couple of minutes towards the end if you want to ask any of your questions. And we'll go for it. So if you can think of any at this point, if you can't, don't worry. I'll just give you a minute to have a think and then we shall move on to the workbook. We're all staring blankly and thinking too hard. Okay, we'll move on. If you think of any, that page is there. You're going to keep this um, document for probably a good day, maybe. Um, so you've completed it all. So if you do think of any, make a note of it and we can go through the next time we speak. Again, that goes for you on the other side of the phone line. Right. We've gone through the checklist, we've gone through the discussion, so it's now time to go through your main aim workbook. This is going to be very brief. Your main aim workbook is evidence sent on the email that was sent to you on the dashboard. Okay, if you all download it, all read through it, at the start of it you have few things about the company, read through it, and there it does have your appeals procedure and stuff like that to learn, because at the end of the day, yes, you're aiming to be an assessor and practitioner, or you might be an assessor and practitioner. However, you still need to know your appeals process within this company, okay? It's got a lot of policies, procedures, etc., etc. Once you've scanned through all that, the workbook then starts. On your notes page, it says at the bottom of the notes, it says assessor's notes, and then it tells you what the first unit's title is, and that is the unit we're going to be starting the first week of September. So it will be on a Tuesday time, I will have to confirm you with all, because we're rescheduling some things, I think. Um, but the first week of September, the first Tuesday, the LMD classes will start. They'll be 40 minutes long, and we'll go through a couple of outcomes each. Because it's quite a short qualification unit-wise, we can spend more time going through things, talking about our cycles, procedures, etc., etc., etc. So those are the classes to attend. Once a month we might do a session like this if we can get more people involved around uh, the country who's actually doing this course. Because group sessions will just help you to keep it all together and understand where everybody else is up to so you can see kind of how everybody else is doing. Does that sound okay? The first thing you're doing is purely knowledge based. So you can go through, answer all the questions that are in there. There are descriptors in the learner handbooks. So if you're struggling with what analyze, explain, critically analyze, those kind of things. If you don't understand them, refer back to your handbook. Then when you come back to this, you should be able to answer the question a little bit easier. My advice is for it to take the question as you read it. Do not double read. Read it. If you don't understand it, move on and come back to it. Because if you sit there and read, the meaning will alter several times in your head. And you'll get very confused and stressed out. So if you do, stop, move on, go back to it later, no problem, okay? Again, if you're not a fan of writing or if you have any additional learner needs, you can dictaphone your answers, just obviously do a little plan together beforehand. Everybody needs to be proofreading their work and just make sure there's no spelling errors and stuff because you are working towards your functional skills, okay? That's pretty much it about the work. Like I say, it'll be more in depth in September.
if any of you get excited and go before September and start having a look at it, I want to speak to you, pop in some time, and we can just go over the first couple of questions to get you in the flow. Does that all make sense? Are we all happy? Yeah. Yeah, if nobody's happy on the other side, let me know. So, to finalise then, anybody got any questions, first of all? Nobody wrote any down, you all looked... I, I actually wrote one, one, one. Oh, you did, sorry. Yeah, only, only, only after, from what you said, yeah. something after, but it, it, I think it's me, yeah, being certain, I can find it now. Um, you referred to um, the details of sent us on the dashboard and all that. That was about to long for me. We were all awesome. It does say on the dashboard on my side that it is open status to you. It's one of the issues that came up because if I can't see my learners, I can see them when they send me. Once I come to the bottom, I can see my learners. So I think even you've got two accounts with the same profile. Oh, so I need to go on to learn the same time. I'm going to set an eye on it so you can be able to view it as well. Well, I can't do it on my, on, on the yeah, assessors. If you need help with that, obviously. I'm going on a You can stick it as like a tag on it, so it's like 225, so if you type that in, you can bring the ticket in. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'll go that's that's you two, buddy, up. If you can point Louise in the right direction, because um, you seem to be quite confident with it, so that'd be brilliant. Anybody else got any questions at the moment? When do we do our functional skills exams? Functional skills is whenever you're comfortable. Okay, there are functional skills every week for level one and level two, however, they will work fortnightly. So attend them if you need to, if you want to. Ideally, you need to all be attending it to upskill and make sure that we are working towards it. Um, so you will be dialed into them. So if you're comfortable on things, obviously, just way you're probably comfortable and it doesn't hurt to advance. Uh, functional skills generally around six months, to be fair, because then you've got six months of revision and then take them. If you are more confident and you do like English, maths and ICT, then by all means we can bring it forward. If by six months you're still uncomfortable, then we can go on for further, maybe up to the eighth, ninth month. By that time we will probably put you in, see how you fare, and in that time between those six and nine months, we'll do a couple of practice tests with you so that you're not as stressed and hurt about it. So it depends on your level of comfortableness. Okay? Yeah. Does that make sense? No. Yeah? Okay. The milestones in the qualification are the ERR, which is the first month. The six month mark is your functional skills. The nine month mark is your tech so as normal apprenticeships. Um, and then make sure everything's kind of completed by 11th month ish, thereabouts. So that the final month, we can go over all your evidence, make sure nothing's missed, go through your PLTS, do all of your evaluations, do your final audio, and let the QA process begin. That end. <laughs> Simple. Simple, yes. Um, you'll all be sick of it by the end of the year because you've all got your own learners that you're telling this to. You're all doing your own research, so you're going to be consumed with it all. Okay? So, to summarise, if there are no further questions. Yeah? Super. To summarise, we all know now in September we need to complete all those little workbooks. If you can't, get in touch. We know a bit more about roles and responsibilities. We've all had a go. You all need quite a bit, to be fair. None of you are completely blank or scared about it. You all came forward with good suggestions, so well done. And we've gone through some of the workbooks, some of the consistent. Um, so hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully. <laughs> um, but after this session, if you could all fill out the final feedback session, let me know so that next time I will be better for you. Okay, that's the whole point of that sheet. Um, also, once you complete it all, get it over to me on the dashboard, like it says on your full page, and then we can book in another time and we can start arranging to actually do more work, assess work, whatever you want to do. Um, but if we can book in a session for the next week to two weeks, okay? And we'll just go through your qualification, make sure you're happy, confident. I do have a free day tomorrow, so anybody who is free tomorrow, please let me know. All happy? Yeah. Or at least, yeah. You can have to scan this up, obviously, to put it over. Yeah. Just scan it up and then pop it over to us on the dashboard. If you're unsure how to scan, just grab somebody or come to me. Okay?
What we're scanning just the feedback form or what the form? Whole document. Whole document. Yeah. yeah. So obviously then you've got one for your records and we can put that onto your portfolio as well. Yeah. So if we're all happy, off your toddle. End of lesson. Thank, Thank you for attending. Enjoy Thank your you Saturday. Much. Thank you. <laughs> Before you all go, um, in session, uh...